Welcome to this new add-on spotlight. In this add-on spotlight we're gonna look at the Garmin G3000. Uh, for those who don't know in which airplane uh, you will find this uh, navigation system. Oh, pushing the wrong buttons. It's uh, part of the uh, TBM uh, 930 airplane uh, which is part of a flight simulator. Uh, the default Garmin G3000 is pretty complete uh, but the guys from Working Title did a great work by adding all kind of nice features to it. Uh, if you're used to the default Garmin G2000, you are seeing already probably some changes. Uh, display has been completely modified. Also, the uh, small displays uh, in the center of the aircraft have been modified. Uh, so had, let's have a look at some of the options. So to start with the center screen, or sorry, the left screen, it has multiple options. Uh, in this case, there's the, the active VR, uh, which you can change. Uh, you would think, hey, maybe it's a display, but you need to change them using the buttons here, right? So you can change them to VOR2 or to the FMS or in this case, back to VOR number one. And then it will show you a lot of data like the uh, frequency and also the DME. If DME is uh, active, you can see the uh, distance to the uh, next VOR. Besides that, you've got the uh, PFD settings and again here you need to press this button you can see that I also need sometimes need to say get adjusted to it and one of them is to adjust the bearing and uh, that's exactly doing the same as we uh, just did so if we press the buttons here you can see that it can change to 80 so 3 to off uh, nav 1 nav 2 a GPS and also ADF uh, so we'll leave it to uh, nav1 for now, but you can also decide to do it to, uh, to GPS. It really depends on what you uh, would like to uh, use for the bearing, right? Uh, make sure that bear that do that I would say the bearing is set the same as the uh, as the compass itself, but that's really up to yourself. Um, then we've got the uh, BFD full menu or button, but it doesn't do much as you can see. You've got the other PFD settings, and the other PFD settings are related to the information displayed, uh, I would say, close to the compass. For example, you can uh, change the wind, you can uh, change the options here, although you don't see anything, or you can set it completely off. I will leave it uh, on for now. You can change the altitude. Uh, and then uh, the scale, so you can set it to inches, meters, or HPA. And you can set the uh, AOA to either uh, on, auto, or off. Well, let's leave it to auto uh, or on in this case. Besides that, you've got the PFD map settings. And the PFD map settings are related to the map you're seeing and currently you don't see any map that's correct because the map is set by default to off if you want to see a map here in the left corner you need to enable the inset map and that also allows you to activate multiple other options uh, to do that you need to do need to go back and then you will see that the other options are being activated for example the level of detail you can set it to least which doesn't display a lot you can set it to off which doesn't display anything, uh, DCLTR1 or DCLTR2, and depending on those options, uh, you can see more details uh, or less details. So it's really up to you which, uh, which one you prefer. Then we've got the terrain, and the terrain can be set to off uh, or absolute or relative, but to show you what happens, it's better to switch to a different mode here. Uh, so, for example, if you set it to absolute, then it will show like this. If you set it to relative, then it will show uh, like this. Probably more useful in the, uh, I would say, when you're flying during daylight. I would say the uh, absolute is probably the most useful because you can see the differences better compared to the other views. And you've got the uh, WX overlay, which is the weather. Uh, you can either set it to off or to uh, next rat. Uh, there are not, no other options and that ensures that you can see the, the weather right if there are clouds or anything uh, keep in mind that you sometimes need to enable one of the other detail views if that's uh, required to see 
besides that once you activate the map you can have the, op the options here to i would say zoom out or zoom into the map right so we can close uh, zoom in or zoom out but as you can see the map range plus means you see more on the map and the range minus uh, means that you zoom into the map so be aware of that so that's the center or three center it's the left display right so now we go to the uh, center display and to activate the center display you need to press the activate key and you will see a lot of information so on the left side you can see all the things related to the aircraft so the uh, the trq trq3 the torque the uh, rpms uh the itt right which is the temperature always watch this if it's too long on the red zone it's not good the oil temperature and pressure and any alarms being active uh, so in this case um, the heat is not switched on um, bleed is off auto is to select it besides that you can still see the altitude here and you can see the uh, rpm the diff psi so the pressure and the fuel quantity also very useful and of course the ele electric data like the amps and the volts uh, on the bottom you can see the elevation and also the rudders uh, and on the bottom where you can well, I hope you can see it you can see the flaps on the center screen you can choose what you see or what you want to see uh, by default it's the, it's the map uh, but you can switch it off if you don't want to see it uh, you can manage these settings by uh, using the buttons here so you've got the pfd home you've got the mfd home and you need to manage them by the buttons here and you've got the navcom to start with the last one the navcom has to do everything related to communication and navigation so you can configure the uh the comms here the, for the radios um, you can also do it like this right so you can, can go to a level deeper and configure the uh, navigation beacons and the communication channels and you can set the transponder code here so be aware of that uh, currently uh, it's not configured if you want to configure it you can uh, press the button and you can uh, define the uh, or set the transponder code here or you can choose hey i want to use to use vfr right uh, in this, that case sets it uh, to the 1200 uh, by default so the pfd one sometimes it's distracted uh, if you want to to use the other option uh, so what are the options we have here right so if you go to the pfd then you need to be aware that we're actually uh managing uh, this display and that's why you have the second display here because the second display allows you to move or to i would say change the display on the right side which is normally for the co-pilot so i won't go to all the options because we went to most of the options like the navigation source uh right the uh the gps or three the bearing uh the only thing which we didn't look at is the um speed box and the speed box if we activate them uh, what you will see is that normally when you start flying you will have the i would say alt or speed where you want to I guess say go airborne or want to decide hey do i want to continue with my takeoff yes or no uh, those are the the speed box uh, which you can configure and as you can see uh, the, uh, these are the, the settings uh, which are currently set uh, you can also set it to off then it won't be displayed of course Then you've got the timers and the timers is really useful if you're for example uh, want to calculate how long you're flying or you can also use them for the uh, boost trips uh, if you want uh, but for now we will leave them the the minimums right you can set the minimum uh altitude if i answered cor correctly and then you've got the pfd map settings which all have to do with uh, this tiny map right so you can uh, use the same things as or you can set the same things as we did previously on the bottom um, the other thing which is in addition to i would say the settings here is the map orientation you can change it and uh, that's not not uh, at least i didn't found it on the uh, options here 
on the uh, sensor side you can configure okay what is the uh, terrain but also what's the distance of the weather which we are uh, retrieving in this case a thousand uh, miles you can configure the aviation beacons which you're seeing on this side right uh, do you only want to see the airways the vrs the uh, intersections the ndbs or also the aircrafts or three airports i should say and you've got an option here to set the airport uh, because you might only want to see airports which are close to you or a little bit further or really far from you you've got the land and then you've got these cities so you can display the city information also the same ranges which are applicable to the airports and the states and provinces uh, which are set by default to 400 uh, miles but you can also choose uh, or choose lower ranges if you want then there is i think we discussed most of the things uh except the the uh i would say this one the fuel range you can set the fuel range so for example if you want to fly and you want to be you've got an option somewhere in the display so i'm not sure in which one it was i thought it was also in the pfd where you can see where you can, where you can show okay how much uh or not how much or can i still arrive at that specific point or do i uh, or is my plane simply or are the fuel tanks simply empty before i arrive at that specific point that's where you can use this setting for right uh so by default it's uh, 45 minutes so 45 minutes uh will be uh i'll say calculated so you've got 45 minutes in addition before your tank is really empty uh map sync you can set them to offer to all if you set them to all it will be synced across the aircraft which means that if you change the setting here uh, let me set it to all then and i set it to off and then back to home normally it should sync let me do it again uh, so let me set absolute uh, example let me enable the airport right so you can see i'm enabling the airport and you will see it both on the uh, left side and on the center and also on the right side so using this option uh, the sync option allows you to set all screens to the same uh, setting you can, can see it a little bit with the if you've got a car right you've got the uh, climate control which can either be i would say focused on the or split in left and right or you can set them uh, the same temperature using the sync option uh, map details uh, you can define which details you will find on the map and then you've got the pfd settings which are the uh, settings we uh, we just discussed right so you can set the uh, uh, the borrow select units the the wind uh, the svt terrain uh, that will change the options here right so you can see that uh, now we change this uh, normally it's just like this but you can also show it like this then it will show the real uh, terrain between brackets real terrain uh, let me zoom in again and then you've got the meters overlay one let me see how that that changes the display oh yeah that changes this piece you can see if i switch it off the meets overlay is gone and if i switch it on then the meets overlay are added to the screen so that was it for the pfd home uh, the same is available for the mfd home and the mfd home is the main display in the center and actually you can configure the same things right um we can, can configure the uh for example if i want to see the airports here but i don't want to see them on the left and right display i can do that um i can change the uh, information on the land which i see and one of the additional things is uh, you can show the roads uh, keep in mind that if you install the g3000 add-on there are two downloads one is the i would say main system and the other one is the roads if you want to use the roads uh, then you need to enable or you need to install the second download 
and ensure that you enable this option. I will put those uh, download links in the description of my video so you can uh, directly download them. And here you can see, okay, I want to see the highway or I want to see the primary roads only. Probably very useful when using a VFR, right? If you want to follow a specific road, then it makes, uh, makes it easier. These options are the same as the uh, MFD ones. So we'll not go into detail there. Uh, and the last one, which we already uh, used is uh, the NAVCOM, uh, which can be used to manage or to configure the navigation and communication systems. So if you ask my, for my opinion, I think the guys of uh, Working Title did a fantastic job. They really updated the uh, G3000 system to be a full feature system. Uh, there are much announcements or much more announcements, I should say, also related to the autopilot, uh, which we didn't discuss yet. So we focused on this part. Uh, probably we will discuss the uh, other options which have been enhanced in a new video because that requires us to, I would say, go airborne and use those options. Uh, if you want to try it, uh, simply go to the website, uh, which I put into the comments, comments of the uh, video or sorry, description of the video and you are able to download the uh, the add-ons and you can install it. How to install it? Simply put it into the community folder uh, then make sure that you of course reset flight simulator and then everything should work uh, normally if you're using this aircraft of course. Here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it then consider using the like button. If you've got questions or comments then use the comment box below the video. And if you'd like to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.